For tributaries, I flew 20,000 miles around the world with a 5,000 kilometer road trip in Argentina, drove pretty much all the way around Iceland, hitched hiked all around Andros Island. I used nine fly rods the whole time. One of them, Siggy wouldn't let out of the country because he fell in love with. Sorry, Orbis. About four terabytes of footage, the whole thing. It was an incredible experience. I wanted to find out things like, what is the worldwide community of fly fishing like? How is it similar and where are the contrasts? Obviously between Bahamas and Iceland, you're gonna see a lot of contrast, but more importantly, how are they the same? And what was cool is you can really put traveling to those three places into an environmental context. That's something that I found so similar between the three guides is that all three of them cared so much for the environment because their livelihood depended on it. They all have three very different relationships with their environment, but really they all want the same thing. So it's an interesting little microcosm for the fly fishing community. Everyone, we, all, we stand as a strong community, whether you're in Bahamas or whether you're in Argentina. Los sentidos por lo bueno, por lo malo, por tu luz de giro. Mi linterna no alumbra la duda, tan solo me ayuda a andar iluminada. Iluminada al borde de mi ilusión. The place that stands in my mind so strongly is Iceland. It was such an incredible experience to go there uh, for a multitude of reasons. One, being it so north and in the Arctic Ocean and you know, it, it, the sun is up all day long and all night long in July is power hour for photography lasts four hours twice a day. So you're never rushing to get a shot. The light is just consistently beautiful there. And with the greens reflecting off the blues and yellows from the sunlight, it's... From all the traveling that I've done, the one thing that really stuck with me was from the Bahamas, and that was Prescott Smith himself. He was... He's, he's an incredible guy. He just has a very different perspective on the world than a lot of us see. You know, he has, he's got a full farm in his backyard, mango trees, banana trees, etc. His entire lodge is all natural vegetation. He started his own conservation organization. He's starting to organize fly fishing guides in the Bahamas so they can like get deals on boats, boat imports and stuff like that. He's just a very inspiring person. Prescott said to me once, RC, I wouldn't fly fish if it wasn't for the bigger picture. He feels that he can help his people and himself and his environment through fly fishing. It's not just fun and games for him which was fascinating to me because he had purpose in everything he did every single day. And yes, he's just pulling along the flats, but he's also, in effect, saving his country. I, I mean, Prescott for prime minister. Yeah, being a one-man crew is challenging. Uh, it's, all, it's all on you. If you screw up a shot, I wish I could blame my director of photography, but I, it's, it's all me, you know. It's definitely a challenge, but it's so rewarding in the end because you know that it was all you, you know? And it, it's very rewarding in that sense that you can walk away from this and say, this is me traveling 20,000 miles around the world and this is what I have to show for it. So in that sense, it, I, I wouldn't give the experience up for anything. Well,